coming. Hi, hi, Mr. Berman. It's uh, me, James Sheban. I'm supposed to be writing this week's episode of uh, Enterprise for you guys. Yeah, yeah, I remember you. You did Minefield. That was pretty okay, I guess. Yeah, I thought it was. Well, uh, anyways, I appreciate you having me come back in. You and Bram were... Wow. It's a big office. Man, you, you've got a lot of pictures of alligators. What's what's going on there? Oh, what's going on? It's none of your goddamn business. Then what the fuck's your pitch? Oh, uh, so, sorry. Um, yeah, well, I believe I actually submitted the script to you guys to review. Did did you get it? I don't know. My soon to be ex wife might have thrown it in the garbage. Hit me with it again. Oh, what was that really good one with the uh, new antagonistic space force that? Uh, wakes up from a uh, deep. You guys are going to get a lot of mileage out of it. I think. Whoa, 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 whoa! That's not the kind of material that we really want here. We are really working hard to drive this franchise into the ground right now. Very complex, involves a kidnapping plot. Just trust me. What's your backup idea? What's your second script? Se- second script. You you were serious about that? We're really excited to not have to take fifteen minutes to put together a terrible script ourselves this week. But the bad news. Brandon and I hated your script submission. Speaking of my soon-to-be ex-wife, I'm not going to get into details, but let's just say it was way too good, and we're really trying hard here to drive this motherfucker into the dirt. What do you got? What's your second one? We told you you needed two ideas to come to the table. Well, I mean, I was putting everything in that first script. I, I, I've well, never like, heard... consider it dead and buried. What's the second one? Uh... <sighs> I... Uh, These aren't brain science, dude. You just pick something you like, like the sweet, supple flesh of an alligator as it touches your own, and you write about it. Write a script about it. What are you into? I spend a lot of time in the arcade at the mall. Um, Well, I've never played a video game in my entire life, so where are you going with this? Oh, well, we are going to take one of the characters then from this Star Trek episode one of the more handsome Hollywood types, okay? Uh, yeah, we got one of those. I hate him, but we have one. <laughs> well, we'll we'll trap him in this nightmarish hellscape wasteland, all right? And for some reason, maybe we'll have his shirt off and, and really show off that he's a good-looking guy with some tight pants. That is on brand for us. Continue. We'll get a, a reptile man. Mm, okay. Reptile man. We're talking. We're talking. Uh, that guy will. They're going to fight. It, it's going to be a rig, real good fight. Um, jump kicks and, and leg sweeps like a ninja reptile man. OK, he'll he'll even spit acid in his face. Wow. All right. All right. That's spicy. Dangerous. I like him dangerous. But by the end. The shirtless Hollywood type, he's too good of a fighter. Hey, uh, real quick, how do you guys feel about um, ball punches? I think we were in the position where we can accept some. Oh, you don't think standards and practice? You know what? I try to submit one of those on minefield. Um, you guys like space pipes, right? Absolutely. Okay, we'll get rid of the, the ball punches. We'll go with the space pipe. Uh, by the end, shirtless Hollywood guy, he's going to beat the reptile. But instead of killing him... Um, they will solve their problems with friendship. Okay. So you're telling me that a shirtless, handsome Hollywood lead type and an acid spitting reptile man are locked in some sort of mortal combat on a hellish wasteland. But by the end, shirtless guy will win. But instead of things ending in a, like some sort of fatal fa- fatality, things end with friendship you you never have been to an arcade have you no i'm forced to limit my dates to swamps and decorative apartment complex ponds stripping off our shirt and saying finish him it's feature please a heinous trip at warp five my name is joseph and i am your co-host peter which i, w- I want to talk about with some other people because uh, per one of our listeners out there in Discord land, we were informed that our old rivals over in Delta Flyer finally got around to listening or to watching Virtuoso. Oh my, they're in the dregs then. (laughs) 
I definitely called it season sucks for a reason. Absolutely. Virtuoso, of course, being one of our all time worst and a strong contender for our Voyager series finale. Finat. <laughs> it's okay. Words are hard. <laughs> Finat. Whatever. Our <laughs> recap. Our, our Voyager finale bottom fives. Virtuoso definitely orbited them. So she said that she listened to Delta Flyers and Robert Duncan McDeal was just glowing about how much he loved it. And I said, well, how's that make you feel? And she said, surprise. But then I went back and just listened to you guys shit all over it again. And uh, I felt much better. And that I had, a, you know, some time on the road here recently. And I said, what the fuck? It's been a while since I listened to Voyager. Uh, I went back and I listened to Voyager. I'm going to tell you right now, you've, you've basically told Robert Duncan McNeil that he is the worst and he is a uh, complete trash as a human being because he liked Virtuoso. And I'm going to tell you, Joe, you're not wrong. <laughs> I also believe I'm not wrong. I I mean, whatever. Robbie Dunks, he's a successful Hollywood guy. <laughs> you know, that to doesn't a, mean he's a good Trek fan. But that doesn't mean he's got good taste in his own work. But well, man, uh, I'm afraid. I'm, I I listened to Virtuoso, and then I listened to the one we did after that, which was uh, Worst World, not Veristeveld, but uh, we're Fairhaven Part Two, right? Correct. Yeah, which was also fucking trash. I know you loved it. But man, listening to us talk about bad Voyager episodes versus the shit we've had to talk about in season poo, like, I don't get it because Enterprise has the continuity. It has so much stuff we asked for, but listening to us talk about like the doctor and how, you know, ill it made us that virtuoso took the best Voyager character and ran it into the dirt, like the genuine affection and fondness that we were able to have for Voyager characters, even in all their goofy bottled nonsense, just completely blows anything I feel out of the uh, out of Enterprise out of the water. Like, I don't give a fuck about these Enterprise characters like and and I wouldn't even say Voyager was like the most I've ever felt attached to a Star Trek character, but just hearing us talk about Voyager and then you and I talking about Enterprise, it's completely different things. I agree. I think that has part to do with the fact that by the time we're in season six of Voyager and we're dealing with these season six episodes and we are we're mad at the show for being as bad as it is so late in the game. It's because we had spent so much time with it. And so I don't know, man. That, I felt that, like that is there a was, factor. That is a factor. It, there is a factor. But I also feel like even by season two, things were just clicking the the Voyager cast uh the the crew i think it was just more compelling i there's something that feels shallow and i don't know fake about the enterprise guys it, it's something i want to keep an eye on I, we've said it before and it's just this lingering sense of burnout and lingering sense of phoning it in on the part of your two main producers writers and showrunners that has become so evident because they are so at the end of their creative ropes that it bleeds into the rest of the production in a way that makes it so half-assed. And so you're not invested. And that's really what you're describing is a lack of emotional investment in what's going on. And is that because of the raw acting talent of the people involved? I don't think so. I think it, it has to do with a lot of these factors kind of piling up over time and you left with a show where you're like, I just not into this. I think Voyager told better stories about characters and enterprise tries to focus on adventures. And even when you have something like, um, what was uh bounty hunter to Paul episode where they go after the seven, some, the seven, like that should have been a good character episode for her. And still it's more about the action and the adventure of them going after Senator Kelly than it was about like. And what little action there was like they caught Senator Kelly at the beginning and then they had like, you know, a couple low energy gunfights in a fucking tavern fire breaks out like that's about it. But I mean, do you get like what it there was just something a little bit more charming about Voyager and I felt I I don't know, I, I think. They did the characters better service. I'm sure it'll get better with uh, with Enterprise, but just right now in the depths of season poo, uh, this is fucking rough, man. And here we are 
season poo episode 13 dawn we said before when we did precious cargo these are elemental stories right stranded on a de- deserted planet with uh a would be enemy that you must cooperate with to survive like Literally, Star Trek has done this story multiple times. TNG probably has one of the most iconic versions of the story with Darmok. Uh, and then they did it a second time, also better with Enemy, I think it was called. So Enemy is the one where LaForge was stuck on the uh, shitty planet Hell Surface with the Romulan, but his v- I think his visor got knocked off. Correct. So that's like a real, we need teamwork. Um, both of those are great. And I almost feel like Darmok, I'm a little burned out on because it is such a pop culture icon. Right. A lot of people wear Darmok t-shirts and yes, and that sort of thing. It does get a little washed away in the mainstream, but it used, it used to be something that you knew about if you're a fan and now it's like everyone knows about it's it. It's hard too, man. Like when thing, and you know, maybe that's our hipster moment. Like, oh, you know, I like Darmok before it was cool or whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I mean, it's, it's Dark to that yeah. before popular. Th- those were compelling stories. I enjoyed watching them. Uh, and it's funny, too, because the memory alpha on this guy for Dawn even calls out Enemy Mine, which is a sci fi movie that ha- is the complete opposite of Darmok. Like, good luck finding people who have actually seen that fucking thing. Uh, but that was a really good example of the enemies forced to become friends trope yeah. and i'm already burned out on the enemies forced to become friends and then go ahead and sprinkle in yet another entry into the we don't have the universal translator hot on the heels of fucking precious cargo too yeah like they did pointed. like 70 percent of these story beats two weeks ago that's there's, what's so bizarre about this there's cool language barrier shit to be had in enterprise and instead of getting it in the right moments at the right levels which should just be a flustered hoshi saying sorry cap it's going to be another hour before the universal trans blah 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 i got a decode what instead of that it's painful charades and i am not here for it i'm fucking done with this shit i hate painful charades almost as much as i hate seven of nine wants to become a real girl robot lady wants to become a real person i you know i, I what what bothers me a bit about the painful charades is that actually you know sentient species probably can communicate very well via gesture i know that's the case for humans you know i've been to other countries where i haven't sp- spoken their language gesture gets you 90 percent of the way yeah. most of the time yeah. people, people understand the universal like pointing the things thumbs up you know like thumbs down like you don't need to know a single word to get by in almost every circumstance by gesture yet it's somehow impossible. I mean, you're, I know he's an alien, but like he's a humanoid alien. He's clearly picking up on. And they use the way the humans do. I mean, they're, they're dealing with, this isn't like you're an alien. I'm an alien. And this is also my first contact scenario. Uh, So this guy came out January 8th, 2003 written by uh, my, my previous role, James Shiban. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> John Shibon. John but it's Shibon. whatever. You just butcher his name. He deserves yeah, it. Care. What I do care about is Roxanne Dawson. Shirts and are off. Roxanne's sh- there. We are one cum monster away from being <laughs> right back into the hot and heavy with old Roxanne here. I feel I feel like because of what she was put through as an actor on Voyager that she has kind of this twisted upbringing. Or it's like a <laughs> fraternity and she's like i got hazed i had to you know get thrown off the roof of the frat house sandwiched between two comforters like these guys got to go through it too strip down show that skin get greased up and most importantly you're gonna get your ass kicked all over the fucking place the more black eyes the better well credit where credit's due this is this episode with some pretty good fucking they live level fight scenes man like the second throwdown between uh, Reptile and Tucker is pretty fucking good, particularly by Star Trek standards, man. They are have at, have an at. It is. And now that I'm thinking back on the episode, like 45% of it, it's a fist fight. 
Yeah, and the fist fight's good. It's- because the rest of it's so unmemorable. Yeah, that is true. They had to make you had they had to make you remember something. So they, you know, got some good stunt performers and you know had the actors you know do some choreography <laughs> and they just were like all right, we got nothing with this script, man. So Dude, you and the guy in the rubber suit are going to be throwing haymakers. <laughs> you like it or not? I'm thinking, you know, since it's Roxanne Dawson and like what she did to sex or lewd this up, and now I'm thinking about like you know the memorable parts of the scene. And we're right now we're just talking about the fight sequence, but like, do you think she at all lobbied to say, okay, the reptiles canteen instead of being full of water is going to be full of a sludge. And like the initial pitch for her was like, it's going to be full of a white viscous sludge. <laughs> and someone had to fucking step in and say, listen, we gave you Vox Sola. You we gave you more, all. We got to get out of your system, Roxanne. You, you got to get the more cum cum out of your system than every other Star Trek director before you and will ever be after you. You've got three hundred thousand percent of the cum in Star Trek on screen. No, this reptile cannot be drinking fucking <laughs> ver- <laughs> pearl the idea, jam. The idea of like all of the cum. And ever in Star Trek was in one episode. <laughs> <laughs> but just think, like when Trip like, goes to horror, drink that. Like they see what has been made. And they look down and they look back up at her. Look down, look back up and be like, what the fuck's wrong with you, girl? Like, holy shit. <laughs> There's so much cum in this. When Trip's, you know, dehydrated and they, the fucking reptile finally gives him a drink if, you know, he spit white stuff out and through the canteen. Like, what a good gag. Uh, so this episode begins pretty decently and it's trip out in a shuttlecraft alone and, uh, he's working on the autopilot program and there's some fun kind of personal logs here. And it's interesting to think that if the autopilot is currently in such a bad state, like Mayweather really is earning his paycheck versus like 24th century where you, you, you tap a few keys on the old touch screen and the ship's auto, you know, the ship's itself is doing all the hard work. I, I've always enjoyed about Enterprise a consistent through line in all of the episodes of emerging technology. We've certainly touched on it when it comes to the transporter, you know, can, up to and including an entire episode being Hoshi's hell dream as her soul is sucked out of her body. Um, and, you know, we've seen little bits and pieces of like, they don't have like a replicator. So, you know, they, they do protein resequencing instead. You know, there isn't really a tactical alert system because there isn't really a space combat protocol yet. Phasers weapons, are new. Phasers had to be installed in flight. They have a grappler. They don't have shields. I, I like all of that. And the idea of like, I'm developing autopilot so that we can, you know, not have to have Travis at the wheel at all times, put some cruise control on that bitch. Cool. I like it. I like it as a premise and it does set up the idea of trip isolated so you can do the story you want to do here. But I said it previously, previously, I do not understand why in the production order they don't like they didn't push this in later into the season. If you want to do this and you want to make this episode, okay, fine. It's defensible. But doing it two weeks after you put out the rancid trash fire that copies 70% of your story beats. What the fuck? Like, there's no reason this had to be now. You could put it later in the season. What is this? What is what is with this timing? I don't get it. And they even reference Precious Cargo in this. Yeah. yeah. This isn't like, well, you know, we had a pile of scripts and they just got made in whatever the right budget order is. Like, they knew this was going to come after. He's doing his autopilot thing. Uh, why aren't there two people? Why isn't Enterprise closer? Enterprise affords itself with the the premise of Enterprise valid excuse like this seems dumb. This isn't the way they should do it. Oh, you're right. Bad things are going to happen and maybe they learn a lesson or two. I always like that. Uh, So Tripp's doing his thing. He gets a garbled communication from Enterprise. Hey, something's on an intercept course. And then another ship comes in and unleashes a volley of uh, shots on it amazingly shuttle pod one isn't just completely blown up. Like we know that earth's technology is pretty much trash. There are no shields. So he's taking shots directly to the hole. 
I don't even think I've heard them say that they can polarize the outer plate of the of the of the shuttle pods yet, right? I feel like they did say that or Reed might have done that at some point. It's hard to remember right now. So we'll we'll say undetermined, but whoever these uh Acadians or or whatever I forget their name were, they're apparently their technology is not much better than Earth's cuz Tucker did not get uh one shot and instead has to land on a planet. And thus we have the, our premise, our very, very basic premise, which is truck is, trip is crash landed. His alien antagonists have crash landed. They will encounter each other. They will have awkward interactions where they're physically attempting to do each other and then work with each other off and on while not being able to talk to each other, ultimately cultivating in a bro friendship that comes from, you know, mutually trying to save each other's life. Basic as hell. Every single fucking television show has done this this plot one way or another it just one of the most common scripts you can write you just put this one in your pocket yeah and then go ahead and sprinkle in some desert crossing so we get to see trip sweating it out in the desert shirt popped off just fucking yawn enterprise classic at this point call engineer take your shirt off are you a male lead you best get get ready for the gun. I hope you did your setups, boys. Yeah. No slacking in the Enterprise the cast, Jim. There's no slacking. These ladies got to be ready to bear their midriffs, and you boys got to be ready to have your, your chest gun show. out and waxed. Get after it. What if, speaking of muscles, this was a Mayweather episode instead of a Trip episode? Yeah, uh, yeah. It just needed to not be Trip. Like that, if it wasn't Trip, if it was anyone else... I would say not Trip, not Archer. Anyone else on the show, if it was Reed having to like do yeah. diplomacy and it's not his forte, yeah. he's got he's to learn to like, you know, work with someone when they're both at a technological disadvantage because neither of them are fucking engineers and they're trying to get off this planet. Well, you say that, but Reed did engineer the first uh, usable force field. That's true. anti force fields. That's true. <laughs> um, Speaking of Roxanne Dawson. There you go. Uh, that could have been Mayweather because he's t- testing the piloting software. So easy. And then it could have been him. And it's more of a naive, oh, shit, I've never done this before type of circumstance. Yeah. It could have been Hoshi, similar. Uh, less of a reason for her to be testing fucking autopilot software unless it's a I want to learn to do new things. Yeah. And, you know, and to, you know, she's trying to like learn this guy's language and talk to him and negotiate with him. That could have been the angle there. Uh, could have been to Paul with all of the, you know, bad blood that then Enterprise deals with. Like, it would turn that into more the B story. Well, they're like, who the fuck are these people and why do they have a grudge against Vulcans? And what are we going to do about the fact that one's, you know, our Vulcan uh, crewmate is stranded on a planet with one of them? Could have been her employing skills she's learned being with the humans to approach the relationship with the reptile people different than any Vulcan ever approached it before. And yet another feather in the cap of why Vulcan needs to have stronger relations with humanity. All those options would have been better than Trip because we just did this with Trip. We know what this looks like. And also even took his shirt off then, too. And for all I can tell, again, I'm sitting here looking at this little uh, memory alpha picture with Trip sitting there shirtless. The reptile passed out in the back and Trip's got a look on his face of, oh, my God, what I just do. I wouldn't be surprised (laughs) if this isn't the second alien Trip's fucked. I, well, third, if you count the time he got pregnant on, on accident. <laughs> um, non-consensual, but yeah, I guess it still counts. There's not a, yeah, there's not a lot to talk about about the A plot here because you know, they don't have dialogue with each other. Um, I mean, you know, the reptile guy spits healing acid. Well, hold on. I guess. Like, first of all, they, they both crash, and the background setting to this is that there is junk in the air that these planets these moons are naturally making that makes communications hard and it also makes uh navigation or ship operation difficult right yeah engines don't work this fucking clown car plot device of i'm gonna try to fix my computer stuff next to a campfire outside my ship and then this back and forth ambushing they do where like trips trying to fix his computer and then lizard guy comes along. I like the fact that Trip didn't have a phaser in the yeah. shuttle. 
Why would he? We know these only have like what twelve phase pistols, I think. Infinite yeah, not- badass space glocks, but you know we can't have good props on the show anymore. <laughs> they looked too good. I mean, you know, you don't need to bring you don't need to bring a face pistol with you on your when you're it makes perfect sense. Yeah. You're, you're going by yourself to test autopilot. And besides, you have a space pipe and trip learned two weeks ago about the power of the space pipe. Yeah. So he came equipped. That's you know, a good they even did a push and shot on it, too. Like <laughs> there was a full frame push and shot on him, like reaching in his toolbox. You think he's going to get a Glock? You think he's going to get a face pistol? He's got no, better. he pulls a much deadlier weapon, but he's not fully he's not fully mastered it yet. He doesn't mm-hmm. know how to implement the space pipe in the way that Lon Suter intended. Oh, God. And God, so put Lon Suter in this episode, things are gonna, he's going to be eating alligator tail by the end of this. <laughs> what he, if you edited this episode so when he's pulling the fucking pipe out like you work it so it shoots out a lightsaber blade? <laughs> He gets one hit in with the space pipe and it puts the guy out. You know, I was watching what happened with that space pipe. I was riveted by the use of the space <laughs> pipe. And I noted he only was able to get close enough to land a blow once. And when he did, he fucking put him on the ground and got his gun. So it's like, that's how potent that space pipe is. It turned the tide. Meanwhile, back up on Enterprise. Archer knows something's wrong. They fly in to go investigate. There's no sign of the attacker craft or shuttle pod one. There's like 52 moons they're going to have to search. And while they're kind of coming up with a plan on that, um, the mothership for the reptile people flies over and they're like, hey, get the fuck out of here. This is our territory. You're going to leave. And there's a flash of good Archer, I guess, here, which is, is him, you know, trying to, hey, listen. You don't want us here. We don't want to bother you. But we got a problem, which is our dude is someplace lost. And the other guy offers got the same problem. Be like, okay, how about we solve this problem together? I want to get out of your hair. You want me out of your hair. You, We don't want to go shooting at each other because we don't know how that's going to end. So how about we help each other find our dudes and then we can get the fuck out of here. Even if he's dead, I want his body. That's one way to look at it. Uh, Another way to look at it would be... um, I don't like bullies. I don't like being strong armed. This guy came over here and just openly shot on my friend and subordinate. Uh, You know, any other time there is a vaguely authoritarian or um, meanie guest star alien. uh, I'm going to do everything in my. But, you know, here we are having a change of heart. heart. Script calls for uh, Archer to be somewhat reasonable and take all that petulant Archer that we've been force fed that just even in the most reasonable of circumstances, he'll dig his heels in and refuse to cooperate. No. Hey, what's that? Uh, I'm being told that you guys are uh, shoot first, ask questions later, and you probably just killed my fucking guy that was out here in our space tuna fish can trying to work on an autopilot. Let's work together. Let's be buddies. Let's whatever. Um We'll get some backstory from to Paul who says, yeah, this is going to be hard. These guys are assholes. They're sneaky. They're real underhanded snakes. And also they hate the shit out of Vulcans. And I did actually enjoy the little bit of background world building that to Paul's able to do, because later in the episode, we find out that uh, Vulcan contacted them shortly after first. Uh, I'm sorry. Warp was observed only unlike humanity. These reptile people wanted nothing to do with the Vulcans. And uh, basically, it was a sour interaction at every turn. And eventually, the Vulcans bailed on assisting them any further, (laughs) which kind of explains why technologically it looks like that they're on par, even though the reptile people apparently been in space longer because Mm. well, humans kept close ties with Vulcans. And while they might necessarily didn't want them to develop their warp five engine, there was still, I'm sure, plenty of of benefit that came from that relationship, such that they were raised to par much faster. And I was waiting for Archer just to be like, like a shitty comment, like, oh, is that all it took to, to get him off your roller? Just so, some of that anti-Vulcan sentiment, like, oh, I'm almost jealous that they were able to get rid of you fools. Down on the surface, uh, again, we're back into this Tom and Jerry shit of... 
Trip steals the fucking motherboard back from Reptar, and then Reptile steals it back from him. There's a little uh, uh, recorder. I think it's Trip singing Twinkle Twinkle, twinkle Little Star. Yeah. Or something like that. And yeah, the it Space Pipe puts him out. He gets the gun, but he gets cocky. And then it's sweep the leg, Johnny. Straight up. Yes. Straight up. Like just, Roxanne Dawson on sets, like you guys remember in Kung her Karate Kid. Just leg sweep, leg sweep him, and then that for some reason trip then immediately drops the gun and uh, gets shot, and then uh, gets woken up the way that people do after they get shot, which is they get kicked in the ribs. Now, luckily, these lizard people that are shoot first, ask questions later, and very quick to kill anybody in their territory because they're very territorial. They went to the same school of buffoonery that the fucking Romulans did where, hey, even though we hate you, and we want to kill you. We're not actually going to kill you. And all of our weapons are just kind of beat around the bush. That or, it, was, you know, it was set on. It was set on mildly inconvenience, yeah. not actually kill. <laughs> the reptile didn't know that underneath his uniform, Trip had already slathered himself up with some baby oil in anticipation for the later scenes. And that really <laughs> fucked with the uh, the energy discharge of that phase pistol. Those phase pistols are in the same class of weaponry as all of the guns fired at the Batman. <laughs> did you end up seeing that movie, by the way? The Batman? Yeah, I did. And you really defended that one scene where they unload on him with two AK-47s on either side. And somehow he's not like riddled with fucking death. I liked it. I did, too. I, 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 well, I well, let me clarify. The first third of that movie is almost perfect. Hmm. Uh, uh, just fantastic just this it's bat it's young batman and long night and lieutenant gordon solving fucking crimes like i have been waiting my whole life to see this right like it's dark it's like seven right it's just yeah gritty and raining all the time and there's some motherfucker out there murdering people mm-hmm. and it's not good and batman's a fucking angry goth billionaire who can't sleep and Gordon is so, you know, flummoxed by this bullshit he has to deal with. He's turned to this man to help him. And they are, you know, out there trying to solve crimes. I like, I love the first third of this film. And then the, the second third was fine. It's when it gets a little loose. It gets a little too, like, comic booky rather than, like, following through on the gritty sort of, you know, crime thriller element that they started with. And then but the convention fine, center is just... Yeah, and like, then the ending is just like, what the... F- like, after the c- confrontation with uh, Falcone, like, that the movie's, like, wh- didn't know how to end. <laughs> like, it should have ended with just Falcone going to jail. Yeah. Riddler never They're being like, caught. Hey, Good good news, guys. This is the uh, movie, of the year, the game of the year edition. All the DLC is included, and now you're prompted to play through all of it. And you're like, N- no, the game is over. I don't. Yeah. No, you're going to play through all of it. Oh, yeah, I'd like to talk more about Batman at another time. <laughs> there was a, well, a lot of thoughts about that guy. So, y- yeah, you know, Trip ends up hostage. The fucking reptile is going to end up hostage. It's going to go back and forth. And the, the whole theme through all this is just we don't have a universal translator. And the viewer is going to pay the price with all of the bad charades. Like pointing me, pointing the thing, you know, just Colin Trenier keep having to talk like this the whole time. Like somehow this is going to make him understand. That's dumb. Yeah. The point to where he is pulling the like reptiles got him at gunpoint. He's like, fix my ship, basically. And he's like, okay, all right. And then he fucking scrapes his arm pulling a cable out or something which i've worked on many computers this is a very realistic wound right it's very true (laughs) and then reptiles like oh well i don't know anything about you or your enzymes or anything else i I don't even know if they establish that they don't even drink the fucking same base water right right (laughs) but he's like yeah whatever let me spit fucking acid on your wound and then magically in some bad stop motion cgi like the wound heals and I'm like, well, if it hasn't become extremely clear now that this guy must be captured and turned into one of Flox's pets <laughs> under all circumstances, like the Federation must come to enslave all of these people and turn them into what will become hypo sprays. I mean, this is the problem with the plot of Star Trek Insurrection, right? Like, 
under zero circumstances is does it make sense to allow a small group of interlopers on a planet that they're not even from corner the market on in on eternal life like this is this makes no sense. The Federation was entirely correct to move those people off the planet, or merely say we're moving in. We're gonna we're gonna figure out how this place works. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna bring people here. We're gonna have hospice care set up here. Like this is a medical miracle that cannot be denied. Uh, the rest of the galaxy, right? And mm-hmm. somehow you you position your your protagonists into the unrealistic position of somehow trying to prevent this wonder drug of a planet from being able to be utilized fully by the galaxy, and that is somehow a good thing because like a half dozen technological, uh, you know, Mennonites don't want to leave. Like, oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, only replace, you know, the Fountain of Youth planet with a race of sentient reptiles that have magic spit glands that heal wounds. Trip's like, oh, cool. Well, you know, in return for you spitting on me and helping me out, I'm going to spray you in the face with fucking hydraulic fluid and a cute little game. Now I've got you at gunpoint. We're going to go back to my ship. More charades, more bullshit. Uh, jump back up to Enterprise where there's an overly emotional archer rearing his head yet again. I think that's when he has his talk with uh, to Paul, and that's where she lays the story on him. Correct. But I was glad to see that Archer wasn't going to be a mature adult this entire episode, and he fed at least one little outburst in on there. As a treat for you. This episode really made me wonder if they're like by the end they're all going to get yearbooks, and they'll do votes, and Trip will very clearly be voted the most likely to be kidnapped slash stuck on a fucking planet, because... This is Desert Crossing. This is uh, Precious Cargo. Uh, was he? No, he didn't get caught on Colonel Grot. That was he was up in the ship for that one. Correct. He helped do the jailbreak. Um, Strange New World. Yeah. He, this dude needs to stay in engineering. There is a lot of other people that can afford to not be on the ship frequently. Endorian incident. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Endorian incident. Trip, stay in that engineering bay. So uh, shortly after they reconvene over at Shuttle Pod 1, Trip comes to the conclusion he needs this guy's help for them to successfully uh, signal Enterprise, cuts him loose, and that's when you get the They Live fight, where they literally fight to near exhaustion. Um, It's good. It's a good fight scene. I don't think we're overselling it by saying it's probably one of the best ones we've seen over the course of our reviewing trek. Yeah. And (laughs) it's, it's a shockingly high quality given that this show has a reputation for shitty gunfights. Is it worth watching this whole episode to see the fight? No, 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 absolutely not. uh, If you can get a YouTube clip of like, as they're faced off, I think trip may have like gotten the upper hand again. And yeah, it, it is a good fight. And more importantly, this final fight since we're talking video games, anyways, this final fight really signals the end of uh, what I think I called a musical chairs of hostage. <laughs> it's just one. It's awful. But when they're like looking at each other and I'm like, tell me this fucking reptar is going to spit in his face. And he does. Yes. It's right in his goddamn eyes. And shame on trip for not being like this dude's got like reptar. What is it? Ford Ford high punch. Yes. Projectile attack. Uh, you know, they, they take turns spitting on each other and yeah, they, they literally do the fight to exhaustion and then continue to fight thing. Like it's pretty good, but it ends trip wins the fight barely, Ooh. but says I'm throwing the gun away twice. Got- he throws the gun away two times. Cause the first like, time, like seriously, <laughs> like we got to work together. <laughs> the Fucking first time me. he's like, listen, I planet plot problem is causing problems for this communication buoy. We need to get up higher. I'm going to throw the gun away. We need to trust each other. And as soon as he like does that and, and takes the piping or the, the handcuffs off reptile reptile just instantly picks a fight with him. But yeah, by the end uh, he throws the gun a second time. And I wanted to be like, <laughs> what if reptile in his mind, like if we could like caught cut over like thought bubbles, like, this guy keeps throwing this fucking gun away. What if there's like little kids around little space <laughs> alien kids are going to fucking find my gun and, and kill him. There's going to be space child blood on my hands. What is wrong with this guy? 
that's going to violate the prime directive. Someone yeah. can find that fucking thing. What are you doing, bro? Uh, I like during the fight that luckily trip never punches this guy and like takes a face spike to the knuckle or something. Of course. Can't, can't hit that precious, precious makeup area. No, uh, but he does bust him in the face with the rock twice. And it's the same rock. I believe that a uh, reptile actually tried to crush his head with like trip might be pulling punches, but reptile guy isn't. And that's the other thing, too, is being consistently led to believe that your chief engineer is luckily one of the best fighters, you know, minus that swamp fight with the world's worst kidnappers where he did like a 12 hit combo and the guy just literally laughed him off only to be felled by a tree branch wielded to buy a, a, a wayfish Indian model. What this episode <laughs> needed was lat. What was last episode? Cause it was a good one. Wasn't it? It was, uh, fuck. what did we just watch catwalk? Yes. He needed to spend the entirety of catwalk doing sit-ups and working on a speed bag and a punching bag and saying, being a great mechanic's not enough. I need to be a trained MMA fighter because life in Starfleet is nothing but being kidnapped and stuck around hostile assholes. They they haul the transceiver up the mountain. They send the signal. They start to become delirious because the ticking clock is this planet has a scorching day that is not survivable by either species. More so... Uh, the reptile people than Trip. Trip can make it a little bit longer, but they need to find him soon. But uh, it, it works. He contacts Enterprise as the as the dawn rises. Uh, but they have a problem in which the other guy um, he's he's undergoing cellular decay as a consequence of the heat and his inability to sweat. In nice detail, and he can't be transported as a consequence. Oh. Yeah, that's right. We have a transporter. I know that we have forgotten about it for pretty much all of season two and the majority of season one. But now that we've ripped that bandaid off with Hoshi. Yeah, you can totally fucking uh, transport people at the drop of a hat. No big deal. Make this the fucking transport episode. Put Hoshi down on there and get rid of all this space charades and have this be her fucking transport. She, she could have uh, had hallucinations that this guy is still trying to blow the ship up. Lots of good stuff you could have done there. Whatever. True. Yeah, they can't bring him up. I thought a cool way to finish this episode off would have been, uh, ironically, Trip's communication relay actually flags down the other guy's ship. Yeah, and they rescue him and then they return Trip. Yeah. Well, they come down to like fucking execute him and then Reptar, his real name Zotan goes, no, you know, these aren't the Vulcans. This guy's shown honor or, you know, whatever. He right. could have killed me like three times. He didn't. And, uh, you know, we have that moment of like, oh, all this space friendship has paid off. No, it is Enterprise. Hey, we got to beam me up. No, Cap. I'm going to stay down here with my new friend. We got to forge the bonds of brotherhood, blah, blah, blah. And then like Archer's up on the bridge like gnashing his teeth and wringing his hands like trip you need help we can't you know you can't stand up fucking beam him down a jug of water beam him down a tent yeah beam the doctor down there with the fucking saline bag like okay i get that we can't beam the reptile guy up in this state but I we get can that. triage him yeah yeah i get that trip doesn't want to leave his new friend behind after they just had sex or whatever and you know he's got probably more cum in his eye and he's gonna get face pregnant now <laughs> or whatever Roxanne Dawson has planned for uh, the kinky, the clinky follow up here from the school of clink. But yeah, like beam him fucking supplies down. You're acting like he's completely cut off and you're basically letting the guy suffer for nothing. Don't fucking bring the transporter into this equation if you're going to subsequently completely ignore the full application range of the goddamn transporter. Infuriating. And, um, and I will say, though that they do play a bit on what they should have done, which is that the shuttlecraft that rescues them is from the lizard people. And it was because they directed the lizard people on what kind of modifications to make to their shuttles to in order to defeat the radiation ish isotope issue to come down and get them. It was weak, but I get it. 
And I would be able to say, okay, well, that's kind of the payoff of the story is like you're making friends and communication. And like, this is the power of peaceful coexistence instead of, you know, war, whatever. But then it's fucking stupid. It's like, all right, uh, reptile ships come down, land, grab Trip and Zotan, and then fly back to Enterprise because yeah, that piece did not work. There needed to be something that went on here. There needed to be a scene. There needed to be some setup for this beyond just like Trip saying, you know, they could bring a send a shuttle if they make these adjustments, right? Like there Go was a to- scene, there was a scene missing between Archer and the lizard people that further bridged the gap such that this cooperation at the end made sense. Or alternatively, your idea of that scene didn't happen and instead it happens on the surface and it's it's um, Reptar that tells his friends, you know, no, Trip's a good guy. Trip's a good guy and then take everything else that happens on Enterprise and actually have that happen on the reptile ship because it's ridiculous that the Reptar mothership is there, sends a ship down and brings the severely on death's doorstep Zotan back to Enterprise for medical treatment. It's just as fucking stupid as uh, was it Shadows of Pajem, right? Where the Vulcan like flagship is in orbit around this thing. Paul takes one for the team and is almost killed. And instead of the Vulcans bringing the Vulcan onto the Vulcan medical ship or, you know, sick bay to be repaired, to, to be healed up for whatever fucking reasons, the humans have this wildly alien reptile man like yeah. makes no fucking sense. Uh, but they want to have that scene at the end where. Trip goes into the med bay and the universal translator is working now and. Uh, Hey, you know, it, it's not a thank you for saving my life or this or that. It, it's you said you'd get me my nasty sludge drink. Oh, yeah. OK, well, we'll get on that. Hey, when I attacked you, I'm grateful that my guns suck so much. I wasn't able to actually blow you up. Yeah, it was. It's it's that form of distant, wary respect. You know, it's that. I'm not going to say, hey, thanks for saving my life. Hey, I'm not going to fully bro down with you, but I am going to acknowledge I'm glad I didn't kill you because, you know, that's why we both survived. Hey, I'm sorry I spit in your fucking eyes and tried to blind you with ass and then trip in like, it's cool. We actually removed those glands and now we don't have to keep leeches and like fucking bats around anymore. We've got like really good metagel. We did some unscheduled surgery to you since you are <laughs> un- inexplicably in our med day. Uh, um, and then... They don't really mention it, but like, so what happens to shuttle pod one? Because it's on the surface. They establish they can't get access to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a plot hole because they've been very careful about not blowing up their shuttles. Yeah. So they don't have the Voyager problem, but they didn't actually fully resolve getting this. Like even on Terra Prime, they talked about getting that shuttlecraft back out of the hole. Mm -hmm. There is no line of dialogue of like. Uh, you know, Mayweather calling back up, be like, sir, we figured out how to get, you know, shuttle pod one off the surface or something like that. You know, some bridge to make sure you understand that it didn't get abandoned. But alas, the episode just ends after the bro moment and mercifully it's over. It's not nearly as bad as some of the crap we've had to watch no. the last like month and a half. I'm. It's not but, trash, but I'm still rating this bad because it's an a, a concept I'm sick of death. Of, I'm sick to death of. They didn't do it especially well. It didn't bring anything great to the table. Yeah, and it did nothing. This added nothing to Enterprise. And it's just again, it's more Trip stuck in a pickle with his shirt off, sweating and being generally unhappy. Hard pass. Speaking of generally unhappy, what are we watching next week? We're moving into season poo episode 14, Stigma, and there is Trip with what looks like a female Talaxian, probably. She's she's attractive. I'll give her that. T'Pol's position on Enterprise is jeopardized when the Vulcans discover that she has contracted a mind-affecting disease. Meanwhile, one of Phlox's wives comes aboard and expresses a romantic interest in Tucker much to his discomfort. Hey, who's the main character of Enterprise? Is it Tucker or is it Archer at this point? <laughs> it's, uh, I, you know, Trip is definitely, um, had a lot of focus on him here in season two. Um, he's the B plot in this episode. This one is, you know, I mentioned last week that the whole bit about DePaul was going somewhere. Yes. 
this is one of the steps on where this is going. Well, this is going to be a Rick Berman brand Braga, which explains the um, silly sexual element. I think that we're oh, feeling yeah. a, whole, here. a whole B plot of silly sexual element. How fatiguing to think of. Um, is this going to be a good one or a bad one? I recall this to be a good one in the sense that it has a lot of interesting lore that gets built on later for the show. Well, I like that. So that is probably why I have affection for it. It'll be interesting to rewatch it in this context, but it's been a second since I've seen it. But um, this is this is an episode that lays down a lot of foundation for I mean, gives you some cool backstory about the Noblians and all of that in the B plot. I'll, I'll grant that. But uh, about Vulcans, which we have been fans of, it's like been one of the stronger things of like mm-hmm. what's up with them, what's going on with their society. Things don't seem quite right with them. And what's going on with DePaul? Why is she different? We're going to get more of that. I'm down. I, I'll be curious to, to Noblians. Like, it seems like a well-established race. And I get that, you know, there wouldn't be Denoblians in TNG, DS9, or Voyager because they didn't exist yet in terms of, like... Creative line, you know, lifeline, yeah. But I'm surprised I haven't seen anything about them and, like, Lower Decks, Discovery, or Strange New Worlds. Although, hey, have... why would they fucking, you know, pay homage to Berman era, right? I am a little surprised about them not appearing in Lower Decks. Right, because they're generally good about including, like, the weird stuff. Yeah, and, like, you, you, they they managed to remember to have an exocomp character named Peanut Hamper. Who got another good, real good follow-up episode. <laughs> So where is the episode about some Denoblian, you know, poly cubes? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it's the jokes right themselves, right? Like you could, you could really use these guys and, you know, Flox is a pretty good and well-established character. You know, Billingsley has been on Orville. It's, you know, the, it's in the ether. It's around, sure. it's not forgotten. So uh, well, I am surprised about Lower Decks and specifically. Let's see where they go with this uh, next episode. All right, and hopefully we'll keep you coming with us to see where we go next episode when we review Stigma and, I don't know, maybe the Batman at some point. (laughs) We'll talk to you later. (laughs) 